Do ma, assalamualaikum guys. It's me. <coughs> assalamualaikum. So today I would like to share with you on umrah tips, things that you should pack inside your bag. There are a few things that we thought it would be important to pack in our bag. We plan our trip very last minute. <coughs> Okay, number one thing that you should pack inside your bag is the plastic bag or shoes bag. But I would prefer plastic bag because it, it is more lighter and you don't want your uh, bags to be heavy. You just want your bag to be light uh, and save your energy, right? Before you go inside the Masjid al Haram, the area, you need to take off your shoes and if you don't have your plastic bag, you need to have to carry your shoes throughout your you know throughout your tawaf and sa'i i've seen many people holding their slippers with their hands but it might be uncomfortable so put one plastic bag inside your bag and make sure that you bring a small bag i prefer bag to put in front of me of course there'll be nobody to steal i hope uh, but i just feel secure when it is in front of me rather than a bag a bag to carry uh, behind you and there are also some people who would use the back belt or I don't know what they call that oh, small bag. Pack. what do you call fanny pack. fanny pack a small bag is called fanny pack mm -hmm, but it's like a belt right yeah so they use that fanny pack which would be good too but uh, for women maybe you would prefer not to have that because the body shape will be seen yeah but usually the men use that but it's up to you and second thing that you should pack inside your umrah bag is sanitizer of course because we are in this covid era still and you just want to feel secure then have a small sanitizer inside your or you can have a wet or spray whatever that is easier for you to carry and extra mask uh, these I realized when we perform a raw umrah, especially because we did perform our umrah at 9 a.m. to 12 p.m., which was very hot uh, during the day. You get sweat, you want to take kudu, and your mask might get dirty or wet, so you want you might want to have extra mask. And it's not compulsory to wear a mask inside there, but if you just want to feel secure, put your mask on. Have extra mask inside your bag. Next is water bottle. Water bottle is very important because you get thirsty easily and you want to make sure that you don't go dehydrated. You don't want this migraine, headache uh, during your ibadah. You want to make sure your body is fit. So have lot, plan, not plenty of water. They also provide some, some water inside. You can just easily get it. But I just feel cure and comfortable that I can drink anytime when there is one bottle inside my bag. But anyway, you can drink water there. Like it's everywhere. Okay, next. This one we didn't bring and we thought that it would be nice if we brought it. Which is a, a small scissor. I mean, luckily we stay in a hotel very nearby to the Masjid Al-Haram. After more, we just quickly went back to our hotel and cut the hair. But in case if you leave a little further or if you don't want to go back and forth from the place to your hotel back to the place, then you might want to have a small scissor to be put inside your bag. So after you finish the top and sai and drinking the some water, you can just ask your family members or even by yourself to cut your hair. Okay, number five. Da -da -da -da. Umbrella or hat or sunglasses. I brought umbrella and hat with me. Hat is very helpful. I didn't really get much of sunburn anyway. Uh, it helps me because I easily get migraine under the sun. But Alhamdulillah, the hat and the umbrella help me a lot in avoiding this. It's very hot during the day, and you might want to have this too. But the only thing that I missed was sunglasses. It was too bright that you can really feel your tears were coming up from your eyes. I'm not exaggerating, like literally in my case, 
it was too bright that my eyes couldn't, couldn't handle it so you might want to have sunglasses if you are the type of person who is not strong enough <laughs> to, to bear the brightness because it's really really bright and so you know the hats are only for women they cannot wear hats to me just so you know, a uh, man should not wear any hats, any sunglasses during the umrah, and they have to. They can only wear the what do you call that? Ihram. Two pieces of, uh, two pieces of clothes only. So and with bare foot. So they shouldn't. But if you finish the umrah, you can share umbrella with your husband. If you want to continue your prayer in there, you rather in there, okay? After finishing the umrah. Okay, next is muscle healer patch. In Japanese, we call it shippu. It's very important. I don't know if anybody else have it, but I knew that I would get a muscle pain because we had a long flight because we arrived on the eighth day and our Ramadan days in Japan was so packed and was so busy and our body was not even fit when we left Japan to Saudi and we know that if we don't have this muscle healer patch we will get very weak and we feel pain all over our body I already prepared it and put it on the table but I forgot it so we immediately bought it in the airport so I was afraid I could have find a pharmacy nearby but there, there is a pharmacy nearby the Masjid al Haram so you can get from there also have this muscle healer patch and when you arrive in hotel before you perform umrah if you feel pain in your body make sure to put put on my legs and on my back next day you feel much better and much fit to perform umrah because you want to make sure that you are physically fit to to perform the umrah to make sure that the next day we are back healthy <laughs> but if you still cannot find it then at least have the lotion and massage a little bit of your pain okay next is yeah mention all plastic bag umbrella hat muscle healer small scissors sanitizer extra mask and water bottle and of course your wallet prayer book not the dua if you memorize it will be perfect you can reduce your amount of you know things to carry but in our case in japan we don't know in japan in our phone that we don't want to carry so much things inside the bag so we just read the dua the first tawa dua for the second tawa dua for the third tawa so every tawa there was a there is a dua in the guideline book and we read to that do uh, and also uh, I would recommend you to read the meaning too if you are non Arabic speaker you would really really feel it when you do tawaf and you understand the meaning and you can sincerely pray to God with the meaning in our case we read the Arabic then we read the English so that is all things that you need to know to pack again my suggestion is not to carry heavy stuff minimize your your belongings uh, try not to carry uh, so much things inside your bag so that you are not having any extra burdens on your body you can focus anything else that we need to add but other things that you need to pack in the next video i would like to share with you our experience in having the solo trip not solo trip sorry uh in having plan everything on our own for the umrah trip from the visa the hotel the flights to everything within two weeks we had to plan really everything and it was our first time so we learned many things through our journey i thought we could share the tips with you so when you go there you don't make same mistake <laughs> as we did <laughs> we learned like really a lot um so the next video i will share the umrah tip i hope uh, it helps and see you again in the next video. Bye-bye